Losses in court, but big wins in the polls. That seems to be a common theme for Donald Trump as we head to the US election in November. Joining me now is Professor of Political Science at Cypress College, Peter Matthews. Professor, that seems to be the order of the day, doesn't it? Uh, we read articles saying that Donald Trump's had two losses in court and then we read the polls in the next article and he's up. Good morning, Tim. You got a good point there. I'd like to read the word, the exact words of the district attorney, assistant district attorney Conroy in this charge, but you're right about the polls. He's up, and I'll explain that in just a minute as to why and where he's up. But the, the assistant DA said, the defendant, Donald Trump, falsified New York business records in order to conceal an illegal conspiracy to undermine the integrity of the 2016 presidential election and other election uh, violations of election laws. So that's his own words, and that's what this case is all about. But let's talk a bit about why his numbers are up a little bit higher than Joe Biden's. And the fact is that many of young people and also people of color have gone over to Trump to support him because they feel like the economy is hurting them. And they also are low propensity voters. You gotta remember this, Tim, not all voters are alike because some of them vote more regularly. Some of them just register vote for the first time or they've been not voting very regularly. And so they're not in the habit of voting. Those are the kind of low propensity voters that have actually put Donald Trump a little bit ahead of Joe Biden at this point. And some of them are Democrats, actually, especially rural Democrats who felt neglected on other issues like the economy and their jobs. They don't care too much about abortion and other kinds of things. So these rural Democratic voters have been going to Trump's side for now. That's why he's a bit ahead of Biden. But let's see how they turn out. If they're a high turnout group, they're not really the high turnout group. So if they don't show up on Election Day, that'll be a problem for them. That's one of the things, isn't we'll it? See about, how that works. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things about the US is that these polls can often be misleading because they aren't an indication of who's going to head to the booths because it's not compulsory. It's not compulsory, unlike in Australia, where you have a duty to vote, and I think you get fined if you don't, uh, and other countries. So that's, we don't have that here. And so people, many people, I think, uh, don't use their, their duty to vote as an important tool to influence democracy and have a voice in their lives. And that's a real tragedy and a shame. So we don't know who's going to show up. It'll probably be a little bit lower turnout than last time in 2020, but it'll be very close. We'll have to wait and see. Nikki Haley has announced that she will vote for Donald Trump. Uh, it seems reluctantly. <laughs> yes, she has. And it's quite contradictory to see and look at her statements from just a few months ago when she was running in the primaries, when she was adamant that Donald Trump was the wrong person for the presidency. And it seemed like she would never support him, but now she is because I think she has on mind the 2028 election. She does not want to lose a big segment of the Republican Party, which are staunch Donald Trump supporters, if she does not support him this time. And she's going to support him because of that primarily. Otherwise, you can't explain why she came out and criticized him so much on policy and on also his ability to actually govern the country earlier, a few months ago. And now she's flip flops. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes, whether it'll actually help him. It can't hurt him. Some of her voters might vote for Trump because she's voting for Trump, but many of them will still either stay home or some will vote for Joe Biden also. Now, of course, Nikki Haley was a former Donald Trump supporter, but it seems unlikely that she'll be uh, a VP candidate. Uh, how do you think that'll all play out? Unlikely she'll be a v VP nominee, but uh, I just heard that President Trump said that he's back on her team. He actually used the word team, that she could actually be on the team, I believe, again. So I don't know what that means exactly. Doesn't mean he just wants her to campaign for him or she could be a cabinet member, perhaps. We don't know. One thing is there's been a lot of bad blood between the two because of the, the, in the primary, they really went after each other, especially Haley against Trump and criticized him very vociferously. So I don't know if she can recover from that in terms of being able to be part of a cabinet level position. We'll have to wait and see on that also. What about for Joe Biden? For Joe Biden, uh, he has not, well, he's made, trying to make a concerted effort to reach out to the Nikki Haley voters, but he's not been too successful so far. He needs to meet with them more and to talk about some of the issues they're concerned about, and we'll have to see if he can bring them over. But the key for Joe Biden is to bring back his voters that are his base voters. Young people, don't forget uh, other voters who are in the Muslim American, Muslim American community, as well as the progressive votes that some of them have fallen away from Joe Biden because of his policies in uh, Gaza. He hasn't been firm about trying to protect the lives there. He's just spoken a bit about it, but he hasn't been firm about getting Israel to halt, uh, to have a ceasefire, to halt the attack on Rafah. Mm. So all of that is very important to see that if the public will, especially his part of the public, will support him after what they feel is that, they, that he didn't support them on those issues. 
So that's the key, those segments of voters. Again, in the United States of America, it's about segmenting the vote. Yeah, it's a fascinating time. Professor Peter Matthews will talk real soon. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Take care.